How's everybody? How was the, the course, the topics of this week? This was a bit more of a technical uh, week, I believe. I'm going to show some, uh, some diagrams and some visuals, but I'd like to get the conversation started first, and then I'll get to show you all some pictures of the topics we talked about. But what's in the different topics of this week that we had to study? We had trustless protocol, immutability, consensus algorithms, so proof of work versus proof of stake, block creation and block rewards, and unpermissioned versus permissioned blockchains. Um, so if so, anybody would like to venture on one of those topics, uh, what they discovered, what they learned, what was the most complicated about it, or was it just overwhelming technically? I'm curious. Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can. I can say a few words. I think for me, it was it was really interesting because we tend to jump into everything that's Web 3.0 related without necessarily understanding. And I think you can spend really hours on the web just trying to figure out what you need to know. So I definitely don't think it was too much uh, from a technical perspective. I think it's a great overview. And for me, the topic that I found quite interesting was everything around permission, permissionless, um, public opened, um, private open, private closed. Um, because I hadn't really looked into that at first and it was just a super clear overview. So I thought it was really great. Good, thank you for sharing. All right, it's Tom. Oh, sorry, go ahead, you got it. No, go no, ahead. you do, you do. I'm talking too much, you do. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think um, the concept of trustless, um, I, I dove into that a bit. Um, obviously kind of looking at it, the word itself could be misleading. Um, so having to kind of dive into that a little bit gave me a better understanding of what that actually means in the context of blockchain. And it's, it's certainly kind of like, uh, it's kind of spreading the responsibility amongst you know, various actors to make sure that um, you know, certain transactions, if we're talking about the use case of financial tra transactions actually can be truly decentralized. Um, yeah, I found that pretty interesting. So diving into that more, I think, and diving into maybe other concepts will help me figure out, you know, yeah, you know, how they are all interrelated, but yeah, I think the, the concept of trustless is interesting. I don't know if anybody anybody else has ideas around that or their thoughts on it. I got a, I got a little too technical once I really dove into it, though. I think it's still a little <laughs> bit hard to conceptualize really how that mechanism works uh, within the blockchain, you know, block to block. But I'm wondering right. if anybody has a view on it. Uh, Tom, how you how you did call it consensus of trustness? So so. The concept is like um, blockchains being trustless. Yeah. Right. And what does that actually mean? Um, mm, okay. Understood. So, yeah. So, so obviously we, we think right away, okay, can I not trust this? You know, somebody who's coming in clean, it's like, oh, I, I can't trust the blockchain. What does this mean? So obviously the concept is, is more about minimizing the amount of trust um, amongst various pe people that are involved in the blockchain transaction. Um, so diving into that a bit more, but the mechanisms uh, and which allow for that to happen, that's where it gets a little grayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little okay. too technical, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I actually really like it now that it's too technical because I never thought that I could understand it. Yeah. Um, I can also set at least one sentence that um, from the first week, my uh, core takeaway was this scalability dilemma. Yeah. And now I see the connection that this scalability trilemma, we need exactly to understand how each blockchain works and that Ethereum is probably more, I don't know, decentralized, but not really scalable. So, mm -hmm. so this, this helped me. Uh, so I think we have scalability, um, decentralization and security. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. so this, these three points helped me to understand, okay, in which category I put each blockchain. And also what was really interesting, these two consensus mechanisms. I'm so proud of me that now I can use these words, especially David uh, explained it yesterday really good, this proof of work and proof of stake. Um, I now at least understand a little bit. And what I also like that I understood that Ethereum use proof of work. They want to switch to proof of stake, but it doesn't work. But I think Polkadot and Solana 
they are already on, on, on proof of stake. So this is actually pretty cool. So yeah, this was my takeaway so far, but I really need to, to make deep dive further. It's fantastic. I love to hear this. You, Olga, you really um, absolutely nailed it. So this is how we want it to happen. So every topic, you realize that everything's connected, right? And you learn and you get to deep dive. And as you said, Tom, it's, we pick also certain topics that interest us and then we dive into them. And then, you know, I can, I'm not, I'm not a technical person. I mm -hmm. got the chance to become a bit more technical by studying this topic and working in it and every day because it's a new ecosystem then there's new technological concepts to have to acclimatate yourself to and readapt and see how they come in hand with what all is already established but at the basis of it in foundation matters of any technology um, you have the trilemma and uh, you have also the internet of value that comes into hand is how are we making this a, a value, which is the issue at the moment with the EIP 1559, so the Ethereum update of layer two, which is an update of how to make it scalable because right now scalability just went down because of the congested network, the issues of creating uh, blocks and the extremely high uh, gas, the transaction gas. Yeah. And that idea is to, come and rebalance that trilemma for Ethereum. Ethereum remains a, hu a humongous ecosystem that is that works very well and yeah. is a basis of inspiration for creation. <laughs> but yes, there, there are those <clears throat> issues that come into hand. And like you said, the proof of work, Ethereum is proof of work initially and all that they're doing at the moment is to do proof of stake. The proof of stake is the layer two blockchain. So it's the one that mm. are built on top of it that are utilizing it more. Oh, didn't so know it. Utilizing a part of the code base to be able to build on top of it. And that's why they're able to go and make it a bit more scalable because they have a foundation to build from, but yet they can branch. Oh, and great. there is Monica who has a raised hand. I'd like to give you a, the microphone. Yeah, now. Are yeah. you listening to me? Okay, thank you. It is amazing conversation. And I would like to add two topics more that you said. It is connected with the lawyers. It was a difficult uh, concept because when I tried to find about the lawyers, I found a big table that connected with some strange names. I believe that there are some kind of protocols. So yeah, uh, I know that this, I read that this kind of uh, economy model is based on, law uh, on lawyers. So yeah, it is connected with some kind of value also when you when you talk about the internet of value i know that each lawyer add a value so i would like to dip in this side maybe and the other topic is connected with a distributed concept because you know there is centralized there is decentralized but i read some polemic i don't know what is the name challenge uh, opinions about people say distributed also. It's not necessary that only the centralize it. So yeah, there, there are my two topics, lawyers and distributed. Uh, Monica, can you explain with, I don't know, one or two sen sentence, what is this? With lawyer, you mind layer, no? Layer one, I'm sorry. Layer two? Yeah, layer. Sorry, okay. my English. You, layer no, one, no, no, layer no, no, no. <laughs> Your English is perfect. But could you, could you explain layer? Because I don't know actually what it is. The part that I understood, maybe for it's possible that help me a lot. There is two, two yeah. layer, yeah, one and two, and the two is over the one. The one is connected more with the the the, the backend fun functionality. I don't know. And there are some basic protocols in this part, protocols and apps. And you know, Ethereum that uh, that Fob said about the proof of stake is is building in the layer two. But there are a lot of things in the layer two also. At uh, this layer two, it is a, it help to build some kinds of different condition of business business models and also other dApps. Until that is my, my knowledge in this moment. So, oh, thank you. We um, also had this topic in our study group, and we found it a little bit um, irritating that there are several different topics that are named. Uh, layers or levels so you have that level one or, or layer one layer two thing um what uh, monica just has explained 
but also there's a, the concept of having like the, the fundamental hardware and then the apps built on it. And um, so uh, several um, layers of different applications, which is also um, um, included in the same terminology, but is a completely different thing. Absolutely. So you're completely right, all of you. Um, that's great. The layer one on a basic description of it is that it's the main blockchain architecture. So really your code base, kind, think of it of, as raw code. Then you build on top of it. And by building on top of it, you can either utilize your layer one and remain much more into the architecture framework or you do the layer two, which is overlaying on top of that architecture, and you can create another uh, network, which goes for Polygon, which is layer two, but is built on Ethereum. So for example, I will be sharing some links regarding this topic as well, more in the chat. Oh, thank you. Uh, but at the same time, there's one thing to be, I would say, wary of within the ecosystem is that we also talk about different forms so if you go and talk with a developer, they might say, talk, go in the deep end of the layers. And that's something different. It, the description of a blockchain, if it's layer one or layer two is really around, is it, is it the architecture itself? Is it really core or is it built on top of? But then if you go in another tangent of discussion regarding blockchain building, so the really development matters, you go into the layered, layered structure of blockchain, blockchain architecture. So then you have tons of different kinds of layers where it's the smart contract, the chain code, the dApps and the UI, which are all application and presentation of them. Then you have the consensus layers, which we had to study also on this topic, which is the different consensus layers, which is proof of work, proof of stake, um, and all that. And these are also called layers, but they come and make your ecosystem in a very technical matter of talks. And I'm really vulgarizing it, and I hope it's not confusing with the different two sections of layer. So, uh, sorry to interrupt, that would mean that um, the consensus protocols are on the layer two or on the layer one? They are on both. They can be on both. It's a matter okay. of development. So how you yeah. develop it. And we're really, if you go and talk with a developer, for example, and they're building, they're, the layer, it's really important to see what you're talking about. Are you talking about the ecosystem, the blockchain ecosystem? Therefore, it's a layer one or a layer two. But are you talking about blockchain building? And then you go into the different form of consensus of building your blockchain and ecosystem. Somebody okay. raised. <laughs> I know, I know. But you, at some point, you visualize it. I'll share the. I'll share the links once you start visualizing it and reading upon it and hashing it out. It really, you really see the difference, and you don't do not need to be the one that's developing and building that crypto to get it. I'm just having the feeling that um, the more I read, the more I get confused. <laughs> but maybe it's just me. I don't know. I think I think for me, what would really help, I don't know if you have any like uh, literature on that, would be like a visual mapping on how everything connects toward each other. Because I understand each part of it by itself. But then when I had to see the big picture and how stuff interact between each other, I get lost. Yeah, I'm sharing some links regarding the topics we're talking about right now in the chat, and all of them have visuals. I don't want to send over, I want them to come in flowing as well to not overwhelm you with more content at the same time and more visuals. There's one I'd like to show, but it's it's a crazy cloud, but you know, it's technology and I'll show it to you guys now because it, it is a very cool visual and I'll link the article to where we find we can find it afterwards. Um, but um, it is Faith. I don't know if you heard it, but I um, wrote yesterday with da David. He he did a session with us yesterday, mm -hmm. and he already submitted that he will do with us this technical workshop. Fantastic! Yes, I heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna incorporate some more workshops to give you to give everybody some visual more visuals at the same time. So that will be. 
integrated. Uh, I'm just trying to open the visual right now to show you all what it is. So basically you have at the center, you have blockchain and then it shows how everything is connected. And I'm gonna share my screen right now, just to give you that little visual. Can you all see my screen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do not, how not to be overwhelmed when looking. Oh, this is really helpful. <laughs> I thought it was funny because it's this, I know the feeling of over overwhelmness when we study a, study a new technological field and we're trying to make sense of, like you said, um, Noemi, to connect them one to another. And then you're just like, how do they connect? I see some points, but I'm still lost with all the moving parts. And I thought that this visual was perfect regarding exactly that feeling of trying to connect it all. Like our brains. <laughs> yes, it's exactly all the tabs in our brains. Uh, I believe somebody had raised their hand. Marco, I, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I just would like to give a little bit of comfort to people in the room. So I'm from IT. You know, I'll try to, to, to give you a, a sense of comfort of when I'm talking about the internals of technology. It, uh, we always get overwhelmed, as you see in this picture. But if you draw a picture like this one, uh, let's say with the... Uh, WhatsApp or any kind of app that you use today, everything that is behind it looks exactly like this. So you are using TCP IP, you're using electric signals, a lot of different things that you don't have a clue how it works, but it's on layer, the several layers below the, the, the app layer that you see. So uh, we are what we are living here, we are, we are learning how this thing is being built from the scratch. So we are in the beginning of the new era. So it's a new technology, a new usage of the protocol. So blockchain is a trust protocol. Like TCP IP was for the internet when it was designed. So uh, just to give you a little bit of comfort. So the, forget a little bit about being concerned how everything bits and bytes works and uh, focus on what, what generates value for you. So when you need to learn something, you just get a browser, go type something there and read it. You don't care if you're using HTTPS, if there's SSL under it, if TCP IP is working, if the connection, your internet provider is there or not. So everything is there. But, but you Marco, don't need to explain how layer, it works. Is layer is a, a pro program language? Is it just a program? Because, you know, is it is it hard to 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 touch it? So is it yeah. is it just code? Is layer a code? It's a structure. It's a it's a it's an architecture structure. So you, when you when you, when you look at not template, but let me try to uh, take us take us outside of the technology space. If you think of a house, and if you uh, if ever have you ever see the blueprints of a house, you have a blueprint of the plumbing, of the electric cables, of the walls, uh, of the the floor and the ceiling. So you have different blueprints, but the house itself is there altogether. So the layers are these different approaches you have. If you put everything together, you have a house, okay? But if you want to look, let's say, to the electric part of the house, there is a, a design that shows this is how the electricity works on this house. So we have, a, we have a design for this. The layers are like this. So we have different layers that are needed so you can build apps on top of that. So the, the usage you are going to have from the app is based on everything that is beneath or under under it and the layers are just design structures so you can understand how it was built but the getting to a, you need to understand the result of it the, what you want to out of the use of it and not exactly the teeny bytes and things and how it works and what how it was created and unless you are a technical person and need to make it work from your side need to develop low code for that yeah, you're right. But Understood. It's a, Thanks, it's a, Marco. it's an abstraction. It's an abstraction of the, the technology. Yeah, and if I may even make it even more simpler to grasp this on the different kind of layers and also this visual, think of an enterprise, a big company. Uh, it had to start somewhere with the core team, and then you have the CTO, you have the CEO, you have the chief marketing officer. And then once they're working 
properly and they're ready for expansion, then it grows. And what happens when it grows, you have the different branches that start to grow and you start to hire more people. And then you have this whole foundation and you have a big enterprise that's working. Look at it as like that in some ways, not just as the hardcore tech. And then when you're interested in, let's say, what is, I wanna learn everything about proof of stake. You go and you look at proof of stake because because this is rough matter of uh, um, technology, you learn about it and that's how people have been doing it for the expansions of, of uh, blockchain. What brings them value? So internet of value, what brings them value? How will they find ways to incorporate it? Because we don't need everybody to be a developer to be able to work in crypto. We need people who have all of their different um, skill sets and mind views around how to expand an enterprise. So how are you going to grow this uh, company that started from a core team? What do they need? You come in and you help. And that's a, the basis also of decentralized autonomous organizations. It's not just for developers. It's not just to look at the different consensus and have this neural pathways that's overwhelming. You look into one and you dive into it. And that will make also learning about blockchain less overwhelming than trying to already understand all of the glossary that there is. There's so much glossary. <laughs> I don't know all of the glossary either. And I decided to make my peace with it and leave some to the side and let them come once in a while when I want to learn one or really need it at that moment in time. But what do I need do. now today to do what I do? And that makes it less, uh, less of crazy than this visual. Um, I will share the link where you can read the article about it. At the moment, I'm gonna split everybody in breakout rooms to continue this discussion on the topics that there was were this week. And um, feel free to dive together on a specific topic or what we're talking about right now as you'd like. So I'd be curious to dive into what we just talked in the, my breakout room, the consensus algorithms and how people understand what is a consensus algorithm and what is, what is it? And I have a visual afterwards to show to everybody about it, which is in the link I shared in the chat, but there are many different consensus algorithms. And if somebody wants to venture into one, one they like, one they think is better, one they think is worse, Okay, let's just start with the most basic one, like the first one, uh, which was uh, proof of work. And actually um, it works um, as uh, several transactions are built into one block. And uh, out of that block, um, there is a um, hash created. And to find that hash, uh, you have to uh, computate and uh, basically mine, mine that um, block. And um, so uh, several uh, miners are competing um, who of them will uh, find the solution and will reward it um, with, with um, some uh, uh, money, like not money, but uh, coins. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's basically uh, the proof of work thing. But uh, yeah, as we all know, it comes with uh, some disadvantages, uh, one of which is uh, energy costs. And it's, yeah, it's uh, very decentralized um, in, in um, um, looking to the other um, possibilities, but um, uh, it is, um, kind of slow and yeah, expensive. Yep, yep. And do you know many other consensus algorithms? Like proof of, uh, so proof of work, proof of stake, proof of authority, delegated proof of stake, proof of history. And, oh, I don't know, so many Native. more. <laughs> Native proof of. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna share my screen. I shared the article where this shows. This I find this is a ver a great diagram to show the different algorithms that there is, um, and the one I was talking about is the proof of burn, for example. And it's users send the coins back into their wallet that they can't recover from, and will get rewards based on the amount. So a lot of 
DeFi protocols utilize proof of burn to be able to minimize certain costs and um, to delegate more and to be able to have a stability towards their total value locked, the TVL. Uh, at the same time, when you have the consensus algorithms, you can have multiple algorithms working together. You have one or two that are the core or one that's how that blockchain functions, but you can integrate technicalities of the other's consensus algorithms into your blockchain. Are you sharing this with us? I shared it in, the, in <laughs> one of the articles. I can reshare the article if you'd like. Perfect. Thank you. No, but like, right. you can see 101 blockchains is a very good platform to be able to go and dive into certain topics. Consensus algorithms seem, I would say, maybe difficult at first, but they are actually quite simple in the way that it functions. No, they actually are because there's many different ones. And it's you look at the one, for example, well, I'm I'm a fan of um, near protocol and I want to utilize um, near. They use proof of staking. And what does that do is that it helps, it's simply what, what is staking is depositing uh, tokens and locking them in and you get a return into that. And you're contributing to the viability of that crypto and blockchain by staking. It's highly used at the moment in DeFi and DeFi is what everybody is talking about besides NFTs, but it's also proof of stake is also what all other proof of work in the earlier blockchains were built on moving to. So everybody that was proof of work is moving to proof of stake. Mm -hmm. It makes them ecologically friendly. So there's no more overconsumption of energy. It makes them also friendlier to regulators and countries uh, around mining farms you know what happened in the bear market just now the big dip it's because a lot of mining farms got closed in china and the government refused mining farms for many different reasons proof of stake does not need to be in farms it does not need to be physical anywhere mm -hmm. it's the, it's the algorithm is the functionality of your blockchain so we all together could be a proof of stake And we, we would make our own blockchain together because all us all would participate by depositing X amount of tokens on that blockchain. They would be locked for X amount of time to which we would agree as a consensus together. And that would make our blockchain viable. And that's how a lot of the proof of stake blockchains function. It's on the computer, it's computing power, and it's a participation. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Do you do you think it's it's just a trend to go to proof of stake because it's at the moment the best way to get all um, society um, person on board, like governance and so on, because proof of work is so electri electricity uh, intense, or do you think it's just uh, um, it's just we are using it just for now and we are transforming to another um, consensus mechanism in the future what do you think i think that's a great question and i'd be curious if somebody else wants to answer first wants to venture i don't think so that is just i think it is just necessary i think if they would not solve this problem because it is just the problem with scalability, uh, they would not survive. It have to be, it, it have to happen something. So they need to, they need to evolve it. They need to make it better because um, yeah, they, yeah, there is no another chance. So <laughs> it's necessary. I agree. Um, I definitely to build on that. I think um, it makes sense to uh, go to proof of stake and other methods other than proof of work, since it cuts down on a lot of costs for um, both the individual, the miner, um, electricity costs. It saves on um, transaction fees, and um, other than it just being very intensive, it just makes sense in the long run. I think. But, uh, But with proof of stake, you still have uh, the issue that. The, the wallets with the most of the staking 
um, um, are getting rewards for it. So um, that would make the system actually not that safe as with proof of work, right? N yes and no, because the thing is initially you can have an X amount that is locked to create that stability. And on top of that, that X amount of token that is locked to create that stability, then people come and stake and validate on top of it. So the in and out and that by the popularity, by the amount of people transacting on it, whether it's a big number or small number will not necessarily impact if that person comes out of it because you already have a stable floor. And that's why also you have different locked period for different X amount of staking. So for example, I only want to stake one token. Well, maybe that my lock period will be less long. But if let's say I want to stake 1 million, well, my lock period could be longer and I would only be allowed to retrieve a third every three months or every six months. That's where every proof of stake is created into a certain time lock feature, depending what you put in to exactly avoid what you just mentioned. So it's actually the same as the miners from Bitcoin. I'm just thinking about it with the 100 blocks. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just, just go it's ahead. A similar, just... It's a similar way. It's evolved to create that stability. So there's not a huge, huge low, a huge high up. It's to make it a bit more viable, but yet transactable and quick. And proof of stake permits the quickness of the network. But on this on this note, at the same time, is um, there are trends, and we call them trends in blockchain. But they're not just trends. There, we discovered a new functionality in this ecosystem in building blockchain, and we realized that this works better than what we have discovered before, and we're building upon. So it's also A/B testing. We're testing it out. We're seeing what works. What works will stay or what works will stay in parts and we will fork it. We will branch out of it. We will utilize certain components to make it even better. So it's ever, it's always rotating and expand, expanding. That's why there are trends because that work now, that is, that is solving an issue today. Maybe tomorrow we'll have another issue that we'll need solving and that will be our next trend. There's two ways to look at it. I would say. Thank you. I wouldn't think that it wouldn't just be like a trend. It's more of a shift in um, perception of the people who develop the platforms, who develop, develop the actual um, protocols and um, platforms in general, because um, they realize that uh, one option might make more sense in um, the long term than the other. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, does that mean, or is there a possibility um, or flexibility within the codes of the layer one blockchains that they can just switch the consensus mechanism? Or is it a complex thing? It's more complex, but it, that's yeah, why I there, so. <laughs> there's a difference. That's where you come into a different topic of private blockchains or open source. And the ones that are open source, you can go and fork the code which means you take parts of it and then you build on top. So then you can create from forking, you can suggest a new consensus algorithm. Okay, thank you. And on this note, um, we're gonna close the cohort for today. And I hope this was fun and it was insightful and you are learning every time. And um, well, I'll see you guys, all of you next week as well. And we're gonna bring in more visuals every class and have workshop sessions as well, as mentioned earlier by Olga. And uh, thanks everybody for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye.